Today, I'm gonna show you two different ways to take off memory heat sinks. A quick and risky way, and a slow but safer way. So heat and thermals are probably one of the largest contributors to DDR5 instability. So if you clicked on this video, I'm assuming that you found that out the hard way. Now replacing the RAM sinks on G-Skill sticks specifically is especially important because these ones don't come with a thermal pad on the power delivery on these sticks, which I will show you later on in the video when we actually take these off. Now you can somewhat mitigate this issue if you do your research beforehand and you buy sticks that have a thermal pad on them and that come with somewhat competent heat sinks, right? But I would say probably for 75, 80% of them, the heat sinks on them, the stock ones are complete garbage. And if you want any meaningful type of overclock on them, you will have to replace them. So with that being said, I'm gonna show you two ways to remove these things, okay? The first way, we're just gonna use a razor blade straight up and we're just gonna cut the glue off. Now, this is the riskier one. The reason why is because you have to pull on the the heat sink as you cut the glue. Now, the reason why that's risky is um, as you kind of apply force on the heat sink pulling away from the, the PCB, there is a chance that you can kind of break the solder connections between the memory chip and the PCB, resulting in a dead stick. I have done that before, right? Now, the second method I actually grabbed from Lumi's channel, he's an extreme overclocker. Go check him out if you're interested in more of these kinds of tips and tricks. Now, this is the stuff that I use. It's, um, I've had this in my garage for like 20 years. I don't use it very often. It's uh, automotive wax and grease remover. I would say this is not as strong as acetone or paint thinner, but it's stronger than rubbing alcohol, okay? So this, think of it like if you take a rag and you put this stuff on it and then you wipe it on your car, it won't eat through the clear coat of your car. If you, put a, if you put this on a rag and let's say you wipe it on the wall over here, it will take the paint off the wall. So it's a little stronger than rubbing alcohol, not, not acetone levels. Now I haven't tried acetone or mineral spirits or what other people use. Automotive wax and grease remover is what I use and I know to be safe. So beyond that, you're gonna have to faffo. So the wax and grease remover method takes longer because you basically put this into a bucket, drop the ram stick in it, and then you let it soak for 25, 30 minutes while it melts the glue on the inside. Let's actually go do that now, and then while this is soaking, I'll use the razor blade method on this one, and which takes about 20 minutes anyway. So you literally just take a gross ass mop bucket that you have lying around. You don't need much, you just gotta cover the, uh, the ram stick, right? Throw it in. Probably want to do this outside too for the fumes, right? I'll move the bucket outside after and then just throw it in. There you go. That's it. And then uh, let's start a stopwatch and wait 25 minutes. So while that one soaks, let's do this one with the razor blade. Now, you might need more than one, you might need a pack of these because as you cut the glue, the glue kind of sticks to the razor blade and it becomes difficult to cut further glue off, right? You'll see what I mean after. Now, be very careful doing it this way because I've almost sliced my finger off doing it with a razor blade. These things are, well, they're razor blades, right? So, you're gonna have two sides, okay? You're gonna have a foam side and a glue ram side, okay? Now, if you have double-sided ram, it's gonna be glue on both sides, but single-sided, you have foam, and then you got sticker kind of thing, right? I usually like to start with the foam side because that's easier to take off, okay? Now, all you do, you take the razor blade, you always cut away from your fingers, obviously, that's just common sense, right? And, you just kind of seesaw it back and forth like this. Super easy. The foam side anyway is very, very, you see how it's just going in there? Now you don't want to push all the way forward because there are RGB LEDs at the top. You can knock those off too if you kind of go to ham with the razor blade, right? 
So you just seesaw it back and forth very slowly, like this, this, nice and easy. Looking nice and easy. Look how nice that's going in there, right? And then, so you get, let's say you get to the depth, let's say you get to this part, okay? That's how far the razor blade is in. Now, you need kind of like a flat head now of some sort. This one, you, know, you wouldn't, this one's too long. You wouldn't use this one, but you kind of put it at the top here like this. And you have to kind of give it a little pressure just like that. You see how it's splitting now, right? That, right? Now, here's the tricky part. I'm not sure if I can even capture this on camera. You have to apply pressure with the flat head to separate the heat sink while you seesaw the razor blade down, right? So I'll do my best, but here, let's see here. Like this. Yeah, there you go. And then it actually gets much much easier as you do it so now so check this out it's like it's almost like it's butter going all the way down all the way down look at that look at that look at that all the way down and take your time there's no rush on this you don't want to hurt yourself etc etc right repeat rinse repeat all the way, all the way. There you go. Foam side first is the easier side because you're not actually cutting glue, you're cutting foam, right? The foam cuts easily. It's the glue that's the problem, right? Now, the other side, you basically repeat the exact same process. It just takes a lot longer and you need a lot more patience, okay? One eternity later. You see? Here we go on the last last memory chip here. That was pretty successful there. I didn't see anything. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Got it. So this is what I was talking about earlier here. This part here does not have a thermal pad. See? Okay, so it's uh, been exactly 25 minutes actually. Let's pull this one out. See if it's actually if the glue is melted off now. So normally you would use gloves for this obviously. But uh, I'm poor and can't afford three cent gloves, so I'm using pliers and fingers today. Don't forget, this channel is fully supporter backed, so if you are able, head on over to framechasers.org, become a supporter. Maybe next time I can afford some gloves. If you have any questions or video ideas, head on over to Twitch where I stream live Tuesdays and Saturdays. Okay, so now it's been 45 minutes, so these ones have taken longer than normal actually oh here we go so you can see it's kind of starting to split now there we go uh i can't tell which side is splitting here the fumes are getting to me a little bit oh here yeah here we go look at this yeah so it looks like yeah the 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 glue side is splitting here but not the foam side oh oh there you go yeah so it's kind of like, looks like the outer edges are, give a little bit of an Oreo wiggle. Yeah. So this is actually much easier than the razor blade. It actually didn't take that long to be honest. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there. So this is why, this is why I don't use the wax and grease remover method anymore. I'm trying to clean off all of the damn glue on and it's all like it's like melted on my fingers now, right? So this is a little bit of a ha little bit of a hassle. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to let this dry for about an hour and uh, then we'll go upstairs to the test bench and plug it in. Make sure it's all good and I will see you guys up there. Okay, so let's throw these in and see if they post here. Okay, here they are naked. Let's give it a shot. Nice. Make sure the RGB turns on. Yeah, I think we're okay. Yeah, yeah, see? 
So you can pretty much do it either way and it works just fine no matter which way you want to do it, right? Uh, again, razor blade is a bit riskier and the wax and grease remover is a bit messier, takes a bit longer, but it's safer, right? Okay, so there's the uh, 48 gigs there and let's do XMP on it, 8,000. Save exit. And it should work. Everything should be just dandy on those naked DRAM sticks. Let's go. Yeah, no problems. Yeah, okay, well, there you go. So either way, you are good. Let's just confirm this. There you go. DRAM, 8,000. So I hope you learned how to take heat sinks off ram sticks today and if you like the content hit that subscribe button do all that youtube seo stuff like share subscribe comment down below if you've tried this before if you have any unique methods of taking off ram sinks off of ram sticks and i will see you guys in the next one talk to you later